Hello and welcome to the show. Now, there are a pretty good number of full-on race cars when it comes to Forza Horizon 5. And, well, truth be told, a lot of the sort of circuits that you could race them on and show them off, they don't always create the best racing. The cars are very quick and the track's perhaps a little bit too small. And I just generally don't end up running these sort of vehicles all that often on the game full stop. But... We are going to do something a little bit different to show them off and to see which might be fastest. We're going to run a hill climb, well, say a hill climb event, a kind of a time trial event, running up the hill for part one and then down a hill for a second part, combine the two times and see what vehicles are going to be fastest. And these are things like the Brabham BT62, incredibly quick cars. We start, Ewan is going to be driving a Mosler. This is the MT900 GT3 car. It is the least powerful vehicle here. It's got 520 horsepower, and that is by far the least powerful car, actually, that we have running up the course. It is a very, very grippy car, though. The Mosler is an easy car to drive quick. It's got tons and tons of downforce carry huge amount of speeds through the corners. Main, the main concern, really, for the Mosler is the acceleration, the straight line speed. Certainly on the hill climb stage, I mean, this isn't the steepest hill in the world, but you're still going to want power to be accelerating the car uh, up these hills, and you want to not crash the drone into the trees. That would be useful. Now, the Mosler is running first. These vehicles are running in reverse PI order. Uh, it's 34 seconds through the first split time for the Mosler, but it's wonderfully composed. I say that, actually. It gets a little bit of understeer, ends up a little bit out wide, a little bit right across. Don't want to be doing that. These cars are all running on slick tyres, so you will have very little grip when it comes to the dirt section. And the most is likely to struggle on the first part of this. Going up the hill, as I said, is, is going to be the Mosler's uh, weak point. Downhill could be quite fast because it'll have a, a lot of grip going on and it won't be quite as... The, the power problem that's going to, again, push, being pushed hard runs a little bit wide. It's a slide as the car comes back onto the tarmac. This, again, we've now got a long straight. It'll be flat out all the way up here. I mean, this course is so fast, the drone will struggle to keep up with the cars here because they really do get shifting uh, towards the air or to any of these straights, to be honest. The Mosul are taking a curious route. It's, as I said, on slick tyres. You probably don't want to be able to on the slick tyres, particularly as we head through the final couple of quarters uh, for the Mosley. We flat out all the way through here, and it is across the line to set the benchmark. 34.38 is the time that uh, the next cars are going to have to try and beat. And up next, we have got Speed Beast. Uh, they are driving the 599XX Evo. It's a very wiggly start, of course. All is still drifting its way off of the line. All these cars are rear-wheel drive here. They... <laughs> There's a lot of power, but this is considerably more powerful. We're talking 740 horsepower uh, going on in the Ferrari. I think it's the heaviest car here, though, at just over 3,000 pounds. It's still a you know, monstrous power to actually. It's a lot of power to try and get off the line. And the first couple of corners are actually the tightest corners on this route. So, yeah, you, you struggle to get off the line. It's spinning the wheels. It's barely got up to speed. I've got any tyre temperature going on as you're going through the really, really tight sections. Flat all the way up towards the first split, and it is through it slightly faster. It's only a tenth of a second quicker than the Mosler, but the Ferrari has got the lead. It's heading into a very twisty section. This next part is probably the twistiest part on the on the circuit. Is the Ferrari going to have not too much sliding? Not too much sliding through there. It is fairly well behaved. It'll probably be flat through most of the way up here. Uh, oh, you know, it's still got huge amounts of grip. We're towards the second split now, and it is going quicker again. Not by a huge amount, though. About half a second up on the Mosler at the moment. It is a little bit neater, though, through there. It doesn't run wide. It doesn't put a wheel on the grass. The Ferrari's not sliding around through any of that, which is the important thing. It's accelerating away from the drone because it's a very quick car. Actually, we've got a little bit of airtime over that, <laughs> over that section. Round the next corner, we head with the Ferrari, and there we get that little bit of oversteer uh, going on from the car. It's kept under control, though, fairly nicely. There's some understeer through this next section. Might not quite have the downforce or grip, but as it runs up towards the line, oh, it's gone actually quite a lot quicker through the final. <laughs> Across the line is good final sector from the Ferrari. It was close with the Mosler for quite a long way up that course. However, the Ferrari will take the toss. Oh, we did see the Mosler have a couple of sort of little running wide moments uh, towards the latter part of the run, trying to get as much speed out of the car. Because Mosler's got to make all its time through the corners. So yeah, maybe a couple of little little uh, errors 
uh, drop the motors time back, but the Ferrari, yeah, will take the lead for the moment. Up next, uh, we have got Impega driving the Aston Martin Vulcan here. Uh, we have some 820 horsepower. It's a lot of power in the Aston Martin. It doesn't look like it gets off the line particularly well, uh, but yeah, there's a huge chunk of power. It's also, I say, on the heavier side of things, but this is a heavier side of things for this, uh, this sort of championship, so to speak. It's just shy of 3,000 pounds. It's likely to have plenty of grip through the corner. Should have more grunt for the climbing up the hill. Uh, for the for the acceleration zones, actually very nicely through these first corners. As I said, God, be aware of these cars on cold tyres. Try and try to get going. It's not the easiest thing. It's really easy to get them to slip and slide around the place, and it's quick for the Vulcan. We're nearly a second up through the first place. Although we know that the 599 wasn't amazing, really, through this first these first sections either. It got faster, perhaps, later on in the run. The Aston Martin, nicely done, maybe a tiny bit wide. Again, nothing nothing ridiculous. We're not seeing any sliding or twitching around from the Aston. It's putting its power down nicely as we blast up the hill towards the second split. We're going to guess it's going quick. It looks like it's going fast, and indeed it is. 58-0. It's nearly two seconds clear of that Ferrari. This is going to set a pretty damn impressive benchmark. It's been very smooth. It's been very composed from the Aston. It's not been wiggling around on the power or anything like that again it's going to run away from the drone as we head towards this next corner we've seen a couple of cars you've seen cars get out of shape through here it's a little, maybe a little bit wide for the vulcan but we didn't see the slides that we saw from the moser or from the ferrari is it going to be flat through here it looks like it a little bit of a wiggle across the dirt but it's across the line great time for the vulcan a 28.5 that will take it to the top of the table that's actually, yeah, that's a very quick time for the Aston. Um, it was fairly consistent through the run. Perhaps not quite, it didn't gain a huge amount over that Ferrari in the last sector. So, yeah, the 599 was pretty quick on that blast towards the finish line. But, uh, yeah, the Aston made the time early on. Uh, was quick in the twisty bits and had the power uh, to make the most of the straights. We move to Ferrari next. The uh, well, again, I should say, uh, Liam driving the uh, the FXX. Uh, we've got plenty of Ferraris going on here. Uh, just shy of 800 horsepower in this 2,700 pounds. About 300 pounds lighter than the Vulcan, with almost as much power going on. But does it have as much downforce? Does it have as much grip in the corners? That is the real question for this one, because you need a mixture of both. For, certainly for this part, for the climb up the hill. We'll see how the downhill section uh, fares uh, later on. It was a little bit too tight on the way through there. You don't really want to be bumping across the dirt, across the, the rocks. Who knows? It's coming towards the first split. It's going to be close with that Vulcan. Can't quite beat it. But we're only talking sort of three-tenths of a second down at the moment. Now, we're heading towards the handling section, the Vulcan was very, very smooth through here. Uh, there was no real oversteer issues. It just got the power down nicely and the Ferrari is continuing. I say it's continuing. The Ferrari is driving fairly similarly. There's no big slides from the car as we head towards the second split. Has it gained any time? It looked pretty similar to the Vulcan. It has lost some time through there. It actually lost quite a bit of time. It's now a second down on that Aston Martin. That is less than ideal for the vehicle, uh, but can it do anything in this final section? Can it use its power? It's got a slightly better power to weight ratio and perhaps having the less downforce, you will have less drag, of course, for trying to get up the hill. The Ferrari neat and tidy through here. Also, no sliding on the exit. It'll be flat out potentially all the way to the line if you have enough grip to do it. And it looks like the FXX does. It's heading towards the line. It crosses it. It can't beat the Vulcan, but it did have a pretty good run through that final sector. Certainly looked like it at least matched the Vulcan through there. It's a 29 Point three two, So yeah, a quick final sector for the FXX, certainly up there with the Vulcan in terms of speed, but could not live with the Aston Martin's grip through that uh, through that middle sector. So Impega holds the lead for the moment ahead of that uh, FXX, and the 599 will drop down to third. Uh, Art is up next. We're sticking with the Italian cars. Pagani's on the raw. It is too loud for most racetracks. That it doesn't meet any regulations. It's kind of just Pagani went completely and utterly bonkers. To be fair, the FXX is also along those lines. But it can, of course, run in our little hill climb tournament here. Uh, we have some 740 horsepower. It's even lighter than the FXX at two and a half thousand pounds. So this has got a monstrous power to weight ratio. We know we've got lots and lots of grip in this one as well is whether it can be composed uh, and use all of that power uh, up here we came towards the first split it is close very close in fact <laughs> i thought it was going to be with the vulcan that's that's near enough identical at this point four thousandth of a second down 
on that. Oh, that's a little wide through there. Gets away with it. Uh, you, uh, as long as you don't have to lift at that part, you're fine. But uh, that's on the uh, on the limit pretty much through there. It should be flat all the way up this next section. Makes the most of that power. I've managed to crash the drone heading through <laughs> there. It's, it's still close. It's still very, very close with that Vulcan. We know the Vulcan wasn't amazing at this final run. So the Zonda's within a chance of this final section. The Zonda's got a chance here as we head again still flat all the way up through these kind of S corners. One more big braking zone uh, for the Zonda to get right and it does. It's not sliding around. It's maybe a smidge wide of the apex uh, but it's fine for the Zonda. Just the flat out blast towards the line. Here we go. It's always got bounced. It's hit the bump. It's found a tree. The Zonda's in a tree. Oh it was it was looking good. It cut, it cut too much to the inside. There was a bump in the dirt that just launched the nose of the car into the air. <laughs> and that bounced it wide. It's unfortunate for the Zonda. It was on par with the Vulcan with the FXX. Um, but a little mistake. A little mistake on the run to the line is uh, is what it is. It could have been worse a mistake. It almost beats the uh, Mosul still, having visited a tree. But yeah. Just too much on the inside. Launch the car into the air and the uh, Zonda is done. Up next, we have the terrifying Ultima <laughs> Evo. 1,020 horsepower in a car that weighs a tiny bit over 2,000 pounds. It's got by far and away the greatest power to weight ratio in this. Being driven by Gliska, it will be an absolute monster at a straight line. But it's not got the sophistication. It's essentially a kit car. It's not got the sophistication of this Hydra. The drone doesn't stand a chance. The straight line speed in the Ultima is ridiculous but it cannot carry the same corner speed from some of the other vehicles here. Once it gets going, it absolutely flies. It's going to completely monster this first sector, and indeed it does. 31.7 for the uh, Ultima. It's <laughs> nearly a second and a half up on the Vulcan, but we're now heading to the twisty pit of the circuit. This is where the ultimate is going to be an absolute handful. You've got to really work to get it stopped. You can't carry as much speed, and if you try and get on the power, well, funnily enough, the rear end wants to come and say hello. Uh, it's, it's just about composed through all of this. That's absolutely shot into the distance. Once again, as we're heading up towards the second split, what has it done? It's lost some time. It's still up. It's still ahead of the Vulcan, but only just in all of this, because it cannot simply carry as much quarter speed. Yeah, you see the big slide from the Ultima as the power is trying to be put down and then it vanishes away from the drone because there's not a hope in hell. So all of these cars are unbelievably fast and the Ultima is just goes. It just goes. And then the back end wants to say hello again as we exit for the final blast towards the line. Now this probably won't be flat through here. You have to be a little bit more careful. Perhaps a little bit more lifts uh, through some of this section. It's across the line. It's quick, but it's... Yeah, it's gone quickest. It's not by the biggest of margins. It's just the controllability of the Ultima that is the problem. It does beat the Vulcan, but only just. It was an absolute monster of a first sector, though, from that car. It was unbelievably fast, but it struggles to hold on. It's so slidey. There's so much power trying to escape the rear of that car. It is not surprising, you know, that it is quite the handful. Up next, Longbow is going to be driving the Maserati. This is the MC-12 Corsa. We do not have as much power in this as we got from the Ultima. We have a mere 750-odd horsepower, uh, about 2,600 pounds. Possibly the longest car uh, going through. I've always liked the MC-12, uh, the race car. Uh, a fantastic, fantastic looking machine, uh, that is for sure. Now, it's not going to have the straight-line speed of that Ultima. We know, we know nothing's going to match the Ultima for straight-line speed on this hill. It's can the Maserati make up enough time in the corners to, uh, you know, make up for anything? Can anything make up enough time in the corners to be able to dethrone that Ultima? We're coming up towards the first split. The Maserati is not going to be up. It's quicker than the Vulcan. Uh, we're into the 32s with the MC-12, but it's still 1.2 seconds down on that Ultima. Mid-sector, we're expecting the Maserati to gain some ground. It's, again, neat and tidy. Maybe a little sliding from it. Not too much, though. Like a tiny little bit of slip's not going to completely kill the lap time, but yeah, you want as little as you can get away with here as we head towards the second split, and it is gain some ground to be expected. Uh, again, from low 58 uh, to that second split. We're now only half a second away. We saw how it is. This section here is where the ultimate is going to make all of its time in the final sector. Uh, the Maserati, you can just see the drone, I mean, it still struggles, but can keep up a lot better with that Maserati as we head into the last braking zone. I mean, th and these are small braking zones. It's a little bit wide. We've seen a few cars running wide through there. Uh, it should be flat 
all the way, I would expect. With the downforce of the MC-12, is it going to be able to beat that Ultima as it heads up towards the line? No, it can't do it. It's close. It's going to be very close to that. And the Vulcan, actually. Uh, it is close, but cannot quite make it. And it doesn't beat the Vulcan. In fact, still the Ultima will lead the way, but less than a second separates the top three. About only about a second separates the top four in this one. Good, good run from the Maserati. Just could not quite match that uh, that Vulcan. The Ultima, though, that pure pure straight line speed monster, will continue to rule the table. For now, though, there are some grippy cars coming up. Uh, Rusky driving the Apollo IE. This thing is all about the grip. It has, well, it has 780 horsepower in this, but it's notoriously slow in a straight line. The grip, though, from the Apollo is staggering. In fact, when an early hypercar showdown, I ran one of these in, and the Apollo won because its high-speed grip is phenomenal. Here, well, there's not quite as much high-speed grip involved, and there's perhaps more acceleration zones, so we're not expecting the Apollo. It's neat and tidy, and it's lovely through these first sections, I have no doubt, to drive. We're not expecting amazing things through here on the lap time, because we know it doesn't quite have the power. Actually, not bad from the Apollo. It's closer than I was expecting. It's eight-tenths of a second down on that Ultima, and that's potentially those first two really tight corners where the Apollo could be strong. It should be strong through this mid-sector. It should definitely, this is where the Ultima was struggling. This will have the grip. It'll be flat the whole way through here. You'll only need tiny taps on the brakes, really, with this car. You'll just turn it in and it will grip to the road. We are through the second split and it is going faster. So, as expected, it is monstrously quick through that section. Oh, it's gone wide. It's sliding. That has been pushed very hard through that corner. That's the last thing you need with the Apollo. You really don't want to lose uh, momentum through these corners, heading up towards, again, the final braking zone that will be a tiny braking zone in this car. It's another one that's a little bit wide. It does enough grip to still get to just about to the apex for the second part of that corner. It might struggle with this kind of acceleration uphill section towards the line. It's not going to do it. It's across the line. It's a 29.8. I think that slide might have cost it. I think that big slide may have cost it the time there. It won't beat the uh, ultimate. It was going very quickly, uh, but in the end... It will slip into a fifth place. Yeah, that lost some time in that final section. It doesn't It doesn't even beat the FXX. <laughs> that surprised me. It was going so quickly as well. It was going so quickly for the first two splits, but just loses out. I think that might be its little bit of lack of straight line speed showing, shall we say, for that latter part, but could be very fast on the downhill section. That's something to look out for. Uh, Ollie is up next, driving the Koenigsegg, the CCGT. Uh, 600 horsepower in this car. Actually, a little bit down on power. Fairly light, though, at £2,400, but yet a little more down on power than I was sort of expecting from it. However, it is off. It is underway. It is fairly nicely through these first few corners. Sounds fantastic. There is no doubt about it. Uh, could be another one that struggles a little bit with ultimate top-end speed, although perhaps doesn't have as much drag as some of the other cars. Who knows? We will see as we're heading through this first section. It's certainly quick. All of these cars, it is difficult to keep a drone <laughs> along with. Heading towards the first split, we're not going to be beating that Ultima. That's for sure. It's across the line. I mean, we, this is about what we've seen from a lot of the race cars. About one and a half seconds-ish down on the Ultima through that first split. Just to show how fast that Apollo was considering it does sometimes struggle with the straight line speed. His mid-sector could be critical for the Koenigsegg here. If it's going to make up some time, there's no sliding. It's nice, composed through all of this, stays pointing the right direction, makes the most of its power, heading towards the second split here. What is it going to be like? It's game time to be expected here, again, within half a second of the Ultima. Now, it's got to make the most of its most of its power on this part, this final part, it is mo it's mostly high-speed corners. Again, the Koenigsegg's gone into the distance uh, through here. You've got one braking zone, and then you've got, again, this high-speed, flat-out corners to try and keep your momentum through. Uh, the Koenigsegg is... Oh, it's got to be careful. We saw what happened with the Pagani through there. It's running nicely towards the line. Oh, I don't think it's done it. Oh, I wasn't actually expecting that. I thought it might struggle a little bit in the final sector. The Gunnisek has gone quicker. It's a 28-1 for the CCGT. It's not by very much. So it was a second and a half down in the first sector and then kind of clawed that time back as it went on the run. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised by that one. 
as uh, I thought it might struggle a smidge more in the final sector, but Oli puts the Koenigsegg to the top of the table. It beats the Ultima. The Vulcan will fall to third in this, but it is still unbelievably close. <laughs> Again, top five separated by less than a second. Up next, we have got the Brabham, the BT-62, another one of the new vehicles, or relatively recent additions uh, to Horizon 5. It has got some 700 horsepower. It's even lighter than the Koenigsegg 2,350 pounds, a big power-to-weight ratio. Not going to match the Ultima for straight-line speed, but it does have tremendous levels of grip. I mean, we're talking Apollo levels of grip sometimes <laughs> through the corners. It is a very stable car, very easy to chuck through these sections. It's just a small tap on the brakes pretty much through here. I got a little bit of lift and coast. Actually going to be a bit quicker through that section as we blast up towards the first split. Now, we're not likely to be beating the Ultima's straight line speed here. It's across and it's sure enough it does it, although it's close. It's the closest we've had a car get, actually, to the Ultima's time through there. 32.06. For the Brabham, but it should be fast through here. This is one of the more tight, sort of tighter corners, if you like, get the car stopped and turned, and then it'll, again be flat all the way up this hill. Make the most of its acceleration, make the most of the uh, the power that we can do because we've got the grip to hold it flat all the way, and that is an absolutely monstrous middle sector. We <laughs> expected it to be fast, but it's nearly two seconds clear of the Ultima at the moment. We've got one more big braking zone to go, nothing to really trouble the Brabham through this part here it will be flat with no issues dive on the brakes get it slowed down for this long seemingly never-ending left-hander it's probably going to be a monstrous time if there are no mistakes it should be flat through here a little bit of understeer mid-corner through that section we're heading up towards the line and it's very quick it's very fast the Brabham a 125.99 for the BT-62. That is going to dethrone the Ultima and the Koenigsegg. That's ridiculously fast. That is a lot quicker. I, mean, <laughs> I thought it'd be decent. It's got a lot of grip up there. Didn't expect it to have perhaps the straight line speed of some of the some of the other cars, but uh, t turns out it, it does. That is a stunningly fast time for the Brabham. It will lead the way, and I think that's going to take some beating uh, up the hill climb, but we still have two cars left to run. The Ferrari, the F50 GT here. It is very light. I think I think it is the lightest car here. It's even lighter than the Ultima. It has 750 horsepower as well. Uh, but as you can see, handling concerns uh, could also have, uh, have an effect on this one. It hasn't quite got the traction of some of the more modern race cars. I mean, I think it's the oldest car, actually, that we have running up here. So yes, while it has a lot of power and is very light, it doesn't have quite the same sophistication and it's run a little bit deep through this first section, which is not quite what you want. Also, it doesn't have a huge amount of torque uh, from the engine in this one, but it's still going to be a phenomenally quick car. Is it going to be able to match the Brabham through the first sector? No, it can not. It is a second down on that uh, on that Brabham, and he's still, even the Brabham couldn't match the Ultima through the first section. The Ferrari is a handful uh, so far. It runs a little bit wide, a little bit on the grass, and this is yeah, this is the thing. It just simply doesn't have the level of sophistication that we get, even from the Ultima, perhaps uh, in terms of of grip level. It, you know, compared to a normal car, of course, it's got huge levels of grip. But <laughs> but in this competition, is where it's struggling a little bit. It's slipped further back uh, through the uh, mid sector. We are some two seconds down. It's really struggling to get out of these corners. It's just struggling to carry the same amount of quarter speed that some of the other vehicles have carried. It's got a lot of acceleration, though, as you could imagine. <laughs> it absolutely flies away from the drone. It's got a you can just see it's a little bit hesitant trying to get the power down out of these corners. It's got the run to the finish line for the F50 GT. It's certainly not going to go to the top of the table. It's across the line at 29. Uh, 0.97. It definitely looked a handful on that run. Definitely not the easiest of cars to uh, climb up the hill with, and it is going to slot into an eighth place. I mean, it is very close. If you thought the problem is very close from second uh, down to eighth, to be fair. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a bit too difficult to make the most of that car around there. Didn't have the grip, didn't have the traction uh, to carry the quarter speed in the same way that some of the other vehicles have gone. So yeah, only eighth place for the F50 GT. And then we have our final contender for the hill climb. Blakey uh, driving the FXXK Evo here, 1,036 horsepower, 2,800 pounds. I mean, it's the most powerful car we have here, although it is considerably heavier than the likes of the Ultima. It's more composed, though, of course. We've got a lot more modern aero and 
suspension and chassis and, and high-tech parts on this car. It is neat and tidy uh, through this first section, although much like with the Bravo, actually, it doesn't quite run all the way. It uses all the road through there, although it's so difficult on these kind of a roads. Through the first split we go, and it's quicker than the Bravo. Still doesn't beat the Ultima, though. I mean, it's, it's close, but it, even the FXXK can't beat the Ultima through that first split, but we're expecting it to beat the Ultima through this second split if it gets everything right, which it seems to be doing so far. No big slides uh, through this section. Again, we'll be flat all the way up towards this next checkpoint. Maybe a little bit of understeer through there, actually. It's down on the Brabham, and it's slightly out of place coming through these next corners. I mean, it'll be up on the likes of the Ultima. We know that Brabham's mid-sector was astonishingly quick. That's where most of the time came from the BT-62, uh, sorry. Uh, we've got one more big braking zone. The Ferrari's vanished off into the distance. Well, well I say big. Uh, as, as far as this course goes, a big braking zone for the Ferrari, and it's neatly done through there. We've just got the run to the line. Don't run too far over the inside. We saw what could happen. It's neat through this final section for the FXXK, and it's across the line. It's not going to beat the Brabham. It is going to go second, though. It's a 27-9 for the Ferrari, but... That is as, uh, as good as it can manage through there. The mid-sector from that Brabham was astonishing, and it will be the, uh, the Brabham that will take the lead. The FXXK, though, goes into second place uh, ahead, just fractionally ahead of the CCGT. The Ultima still had the fastest time through that first split. <laughs> After all of this, the Ultima still led at the first split. That was so fast in a straight line. But its lack of grip let it down. The Vulcan impresses, actually, in fifth, ahead of the MC12. The Ferrari, uh, the FXX, couldn't beat the Maserati, but again, super, super close. The Apollo in eighth, uh, while the F50 GT struggled with the handling in ninth, ahead of the 599XX. The Mosler, we knew, might lack straight-line speed, and the Zonda had a meeting with a tree. So there we go. That is it for part one. That is it for the hill climb portion of this uh, challenge if you will. Uh, the cars, I mean, the, Bra the Brabham, astonishingly quick up that, up that course, but it is not over yet. There is still the downhill portion to come, and we may well see some different vehicles uh, excel at, uh, at that one, but the Brabham has a nice lead, certainly, going in to, uh, into the next part. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.